Hello and welcome to the Unit 1 lecture number 4. This lecture is over European competition in North America. And what sets this up is that Spain has basically taken control of the North and South American continents. And other European nations start coming over and trying to set up things and Spain does not really like that very much and we're gonna see kind of how that plays out and how Spain reacts to this. England and France are gonna be the nations that we focus on coming over here and setting up colonies at first and exploring I guess at first. Um, England and France and other European countries are going to be looking for the Northwest Passage. And I'm going to show you a map, but remember if things are in bold and underlined, that maybe a nice highlighter would come in handy, um, if you could. But Spain is looking for North American societies that are going to be as rich as the Incas and the Aztecs. They're never going to quite find those. Um, the Aztecs and the Incas were huge, complex societies in Mezzo and South America, and Spain doesn't ever really find anything quite that large in North America. While Spain is busy looking for those societies, um, other nations are searching for the Northwest Passage, meaning a water route through North America to Asia. So through North America to Asia. Um, this is what they believe the world is going to look like. They are going to be leaving from Europe, which is over here, and they think if they can get over this little landmass, maybe it can lead them to Asia. If they can just get right through here and go this way, it'll take them all the way over here and bring them over here to get to Asia. Now, what's the problem with this theory? Well, if you know anything about geography, you know that there is a whole bunch of land up here called Canada. And this is what the world actually looks like. So they're going to be coming over here and they're thinking, oh, we'll just go into here and then, oh, land. So they can't really do this. Um, but that doesn't stop them from looking. And one of the first people that we're going to be talking about is John Cabot. And he is Italian. So he was born in Italy, but he sails for England. Um, England basically pays him money to come sail for them. Okay, And in 1497, he went looking for the Northwest Passage, hoping to find Asia. And does he find it? No, he doesn't because it doesn't exist. All right, It doesn't exist, but he's still hoping to find it. So he lands in Newfoundland, which is in this shaded area of red over here. Um, he's leaving from England. He's going over... And landing right here he comes back to England and says oh I found Asia it's not Asia it's Newfoundland it's part of Canada he they say great why don't you go back and try to find some more stuff so he goes back but he tries to find Japan but he is never seen again so question mark no one knows where he went Another person that we talk about is Giovanni de Verzano. He was also Italian, but he is going to be sailing for France. France is going to pay him money to sail for them. He tried to find the Northwest Passage, but couldn't. Why couldn't he? Because it didn't exist. Um, a French explorer, Jacques Carter, explored the St. Lawrence River, and he lands in what would become Montreal, and they start setting up French establishments in the north around Canada. This is the area that Jock Carter is exploring. He's coming in from Europe in the Atlantic Ocean, coming traveling down the St. St. Lawrence River, and exploring all in this area. French and English claims to North America angered Spain, and why would they make Spain upset? Basically, it's because Spain already has claim to this land, and why would they think that they already have claim to this land? It's basically because under the Treaty of Tordesilla, they have already been told that this land is theirs. And who drew this line that the Treaty of Tordesilla is based on? That is the Pope. 
and who follows the Pope? Those are the Catholics. And what we're going to find out is that English and French are ruled by Protestants, and they do not follow the Pope. So they are not going to listen to this line or this treaty that is based on something the Pope said that they don't even listen to. So while this is going on, Spain's angry, but they're still looking for riches in North America, and they're traveling in the south of the United States looking for cities of gold, which they don't find because they don't exist, but they're still looking. These guys up here look for the cities of gold. So all of this tension about who claims what land and what land is whose leads to Spain and England fighting. Queen Elizabeth, who is this lady over here in this picture, comes to power in England, and she is a Protestant. Spain is Catholic, so these two gro groups do not get along. Um, and she is wanting to challenge Spain's power at sea. Spain right now is the most powerful country in the world. They have the largest navy, they have the most land, and then they control pretty much everything about exploration. She says, well... We want to say in this, we want to have some land. So she's just saying, stop us, stop us if you can. And if you can't, we're just going to take the land anyway. So what she does is in 1577, she sends Francis Drake to raid Spanish ports all around the world. He's out for three years raiding Spanish ports. Now, Francis Drake is basically a pirate. Um, but... The Queen of England gives him a piece of paper, and this was commonplace back in this time. They would give him a piece of paper, and it would say, you can do whatever you want as long as it's not towards the English government because you're acting in our name. And they would become privateers, which just is a nice, fancy word for pirate. So he goes around raiding Spanish ports, and this makes Spain really, really angry. And they send 130 ships, which is a lot of ships, all right, in these 130 ships are called the Spanish Armada, and they send them to England to conquer them and take them over and restore Catholicism and kick Protestant Queen Elizabeth out and then basically take over England for Spain. So this is why Spain is so angry. Basically, all of this red stuff all over here up in this top map is controlled by Spain. Um... And it's easy for them to defend this stuff over here because it's close and it's easy to get to from actually the country of Spain. But what Francis, what Sir Francis Drake does, if you look down here on this bottom map, is he follows this red line and goes around the tip of South America and hits all of the ports on the west coast of the Spanish Empire. And that's because these are not as easily defended and not really defended very much at all. So he is able to load up on gold and money and supplies, and he steals so much stuff from the Spanish, and the Spanish get really, really, really angry. So they send their 130 ships, the Spanish Armada, into the English Channel, and England and Spain meet for battle. Um... Spain is pretty sure that they're going to win pretty easily because they have these big, massive ships, but what ends up happening is the smaller English ships beat the Spanish ships because they're quicker, they can avoid the cannon fire, they can get in close to the big ships, attack them, and the Spanish Armada is defeated, and Spain is humili humiliated and loses a lot of power because of this. And it's import this defeat of Spain is really important for two reasons. One is that it proves England could protect itself. So if England wants to set up colonies, it's going to, and there's nothing Spain can do about it. And the second thing is that it proves Spain could be beaten, which basically shows that other countries that, hey, we can stand up to Spain. They're not that bad. We can... We can probably kick them out. and what, Because before, what was happening is people were scared of Spain. But now, they're not. They're not scared of Spain anymore. And they're just going to go and take over land. And who cares what Spain says? This is a picture of what maybe the Spanish Armada and the English Navy 
meeting in the English Channel might have looked like. It's just a drawing, though. You have a whole bunch of big Spanish ships and then these smaller English ships that it can zig and zag in and out of the um, huge Spanish Armada. So it looks like a mess. I mean, this it was pretty crowded. So this allows other countries, like the French and the Dutch, to set up their own colonies in the North American continent. Frenchman Samuel de Champlain set up trading posts in Canada, and these were the first French settlements in Canada. This becomes known as New France, because he's French and he's from France, so it's New France, how clever. Um, they began to thrive because of the fur trade. The f they would get the fur from the Native Americans, and then they would ship it to Europe, and then they would sell it there for a really large profit. They were so successful because they got a lot of fur from the Native Americans, because the Native Americans were more willing to trade with the French because the French were friendlier to the Native Americans. So New France begins to thrive because they're so friendly with the Native Americans. The Native Americans didn't really want to give any of their furs to the Spanish because the Spanish were just killing Native Americans, and that's not very nice. But the, Fran the French were trading with them and being nice, and everything was great. The Dutch set up a settlement called New Netherlands, which is where the Dutch are from the Netherlands, and now they set up their colony New Netherland, because that's just really clever. Um, it is where present-day New York is. It was a very diverse settlement, open to all types of people. And these settlements, both New France and New Netherland, were very successful, but they were very small compared to the empire Spain was building. But what we're going to see is that Spain loses a lot of its power, and England and France get a lot of holdings in North America, and all three of those countries are going to start fighting against each other for control of the continent. But that brings us to the end of Lecture 4, and I will see you for Lecture 5.